do want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin if we can because we want to talk to him about the winds right now. That's usually a concern when we're in situations like this. So Chris, what are we looking at in terms of wind speed and, and the possibility that this could spread? The, the way the winds are at the moment overall are almost light and variable. So very, very light winds, they kind of change direction in a, in a short period of time, almost kind of a instant. They may change uh, three miles from the north and then five miles an hour from the south. So the winds don't look to be too much of an issue. What could be an issue is if we get later into the day and we start to see more or later into the next couple of hours, uh, we start to see more of these type of thunderstorms fire up. Now we have some here's a meet uh, just in the kind of almost center of the screen there and then we have some bigger storms that are off over northern or central Washington central and northern Washington Parish uh, did have some uh, heavier downpours with these didn't look like it was causing too many outflow boundaries. What those are are when you get that initial burst downburst of heavy rainfall uh, the air that is associated with the, the thunderstorm actually is forced down to the surface and it spreads out in a circle and you get suddenly gusty winds even miles away from where the thunderstorm is. Didn't really see too many of those with those storms over Franklinton. If we had had one of those outflow boundaries, well one, we'd be able to see it on radar and two, if it was moving in the direction of Roseland and Arcola, uh, you could all of a sudden get a wind gust of 30 miles an hour coming from the east. So then that would be spreading that uh, debris more toward I-55 because again the area that we're talking about is right along here highway or US Highway 51 north of a meet you have uh, Roseland which is about here and then Arcola is right at this intersection of 51 and then this uh, road here that is running horizontal uh, is Highway 10. So it's, I mean, that, that business, Smitty's, is right at that intersection. So it's actually very easy to find. And we were talking about when the explosion occurred. Oop, I wanted to go back here to a visible satellite. Oop, <laughs> keeps jumping on me. Uh, going to a visible satellite here. And around that time, notice we started to see an increase in cloud cover. There's our cola right at the center of the screen. And if this occurred at around 1245, uh, depending upon exactly how high into the atmosphere that smoke was able to get, our visible satellite likely would have seen it. But notice at that time, we started to see more cloud cover already moving in. And as you heard, uh, heard a couple of reports that uh, from folks that were in the Roseland area at that time, it was actually had some sunshine around and that is very on our visible satellite that we really didn't see the clouds increase until after 1245 going into the one o'clock, two o'clock and now three o'clock hour where we do have mostly cloudy skies over that area at the moment. So obviously with the cloud cover, it's going to be mixed in with the smoke. We cannot see that on our visible satellite and sometimes as well. You can see that on radar because the radar site, remember, is in Hammond. So kind of going back in time here on radar, we'll see if we can find any of that uh, kind of indications are of, and it could be this that little spot right there that you see kind of popping up on radar at about 12 and then one going into around 101 uh, that would it could be rain it could also be the smoke or even debris uh, coming in from the fire and actually we can do this I can go to our debris signature and go back in time, and I know this is kind of a more complicated looking graphic here, but when you find those concentrations, I know when you see kind of a, a, a multi-pixelated range of colors, that's just nothing. When you start to see pockets of red is when, or excuse me, uh, going from a white to a deep blue is indication of debris in the air. And notice there aren't really indications of significant debris. Normally we would use this to verify a tornado. You do start to see a little bit more whites to blues. If you look up at the uh, legend here at the top of the screen, again, kind of that multi-color pixelation is showing no debris. But when it starts to transition to a white to then almost gray and deep blue, it does indicate some debris in the air. So it's possible uh, that our radar is picking up on some of that debris in the air over the Arcola area. Uh, the, this is called the, uh, our debris signature. It's a, a product on the radar that's not always perfect. And usually it only is indicating when we have kind of obvious debris from a tornado. Uh, but if this uh, explosion was large enough and if the debris was large enough, you would be able to see that on radar, not jumping out at me. So hopefully the debris that was uh, lifted aloft into the air was 
uh, minor compared to the explosion itself. This is an updated look at radar. We do have a fairly heavy thunderstorm, a fairly heavy shower, I should say, uh, just to the uh, east of Roseland and Arcola. You've got some light rainfall there at the moment. A uh, moment ago, we had a few lightning strikes, but at least when I was showing you the satellite as well as radar from the time of the explosion, there were no thunderstorms around and there was no lightning. Obviously, you can get lightning well removed from a thunderstorm, but there was no lightning associated around Arcola at that 1245 or so time frame. So it doesn't appear as though this was uh, caused by a lightning strike, which, you know, that is certainly possible. And I'm sure folks were were kind of maybe thinking that is a possibility uh, at some of these uh, chemical plants with a lightning strike, but it doesn't look like that was the case at the moment. Some light rain around there, probably not kicking up the winds at all. Again, as far as the winds go, obviously we do not have a weather station at Roseland or um, at uh, Arcola, uh, but nearby wind observations, Macomb north at eight miles an hour and actually no wind at the moment in Hammond. So the winds at least are fairly light, so that should not allow for the debris to spread very very far. Now something to consider, these are winds at the surface. As you get a little bit higher into the atmosphere, we call a loft, your winds do increase a bit, but there really are no indications that the winds aloft are very strong, even in kind of the lower levels of just above the surface, where that would spread the debris very, very far. As you heard earlier, the evacuation area was within a one mile radius uh, that may have been extended to two, or at least that's where our Meg Ferris was sent at least two miles away from the chemical plant. It doesn't look like winds are going to be a major factor in spreading that debris. As we've been reporting, it's not a concern of a chemical per se in the air and spreading. It's that debris uh, spreading out away from the explosion site that uh, have prompted officials to uh, limit uh, the, the area around now, about a two mile radius from Arcola and just to the north of uh, Roseland. That is really interesting to take a look at that debris field. I mean, it's interesting when you guys can do that with tornadoes, but to be able to see an explosion, any debris that might have come from it is really fascinating that we can do that on the radar. And, and the, you know, and again, Arcola is fairly close. Our radar site was moved from Slidell to Hammond, so the radar is fairly close to where the explosion occurred. And um, even at the even at what we call reflectivity, when we're showing you just rain, this is able to sometimes we were uh, chatting with some of our news folks that we can see traffic on elevated roads. It wow. looked like there was a shower that popped up on the causeway. And I said, no, that's just the traffic. And somebody thought I was joking. And I said, no, uh, radar is able to detect traffic in certain conditions on the elevated roads. So we can actually see cars, not individual cars, but it will pick it up as if it's rain on the causeway on the highway 11, the twin span. And so with the radar that close to our cola, it would if this had been large enough to actually see that explosion or at least see uh, some semblance of what would look like rain uh, popping up. And again, around that time, you do start to see a little uh, blip on the radar. And again, it's possible that that was light rain, but it's also possible that this is the moment the radar depicted uh, that debris and the explosion in the air. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's really interesting. We'll have to wait and see exactly what caused this explosion to start again. Chris saying, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not likely that it was lightning, um, but uh, clearly something yes. caused that whole facility to ignite. So very serious situation there, Chris. And you're saying, the, again, the winds are okay? Winds, it, you know, again, we don't have a station at Arcola or Raceland, we're, we're relying on wind observations from nearby. And in Hammond, just to the south of that, uh, they're dead calm. Uh, just to the north in Macomb, winds are fairly light, eight miles an hour notice. Uh, you have to go down to the southwest to find Gonzales, light seven miles an hour, Slidell, Bogalusa, all reporting non-existent winds either. So the winds on the North Shore at the moment, unless you're within a thunderstorm, are pretty calm at the moment. So that should hold Hopefully limit the spread of the debris. Of course, that could change. We do have some thunderstorms in the vicinity, uh, and that could easily change, especially if one of these thunderstorms moves toward uh, Arcola and Raceland. Right now, the the closest thunderstorm activity is off. The strongest thunderstorm activity is off to the east over Franklinton. But we do have a few thunderstorms that have popped up in. Uh, 
uh, St. Helena, Living, almost Livingston Parish, it doesn't look like these are very strong. So probably not getting very gusty winds with these storms that are just to the west of I-55, right across the parish line in St. Helena. There are contaminants in the air, however, those showers could be helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. if they got a heavy downpour over that, uh, that would help to settle all of that, uh, you know, whatever, whatever size debris is aloft, lifted aloft in the air, this would help to settle it down to the surface. So yeah, actually getting a thunderstorm or some heavy rain over the area would not be a bad thing. Okay, well that is good to know.